So, um, hello everyone. I'm Rodrigo Santos. I'm an associate professor at the Federal University of Minas Gerais uh, in Brazil. This is joint work of two of my students, Pedro uh, and Bruno, on uh, efficient online learning to rank for sequential music recommendation. So, uh, we're interested here in recommending sequences of songs, for example, of the kind you see uh, in a playlist like this built uh, around some uh, common thing like the, the genre of the songs included in the playlist. But more uh, precisely, uh, we're focusing here on dynamically generated playlists uh, that would uh, more closely resemble what you see uh, when you launch a playlist after a given uh, song, for example, this is a playlist built around Black Hole Sun by Soundgarden. And uh, the idea here is that we're given um, a seed song to, to start with. And from that seed song, we'd like to produce a sequence of uh, recommendations that ideally will fit uh, the user's mood and the user's long-term preferences as well uh, as we go uh, along the way. But um, different, uh, perhaps, from the previous presentations, we're uh, focusing, again, on a dynamic version of this setting where uh, things might go not as well as planned. Uh, for example, um, the user might not like some of the songs uh, recommended along the way, and uh, he could skip one of the songs, for example. In this case, instead of relying on a model that was perhaps built uh, offline uh, via supervised learning, we'd like to dynamically react uh, to this event, this, this negative event, and um, correct the course of recommendations. So uh, we could, for example, shift into a, a different model and start recommending from there. And of course, this can uh, repeat again throughout the, the session. And once again, we'd like to uh, react uh, immediately, uh, if at all possible. Uh, the key question uh, we want to address here is how exactly uh, can we react upon uh, receiving a negative feedback skip uh, in this case? This work builds upon uh, previous work we published at Braxis 2019, uh, which was inspired by uh, the literature on online learning to rank for search. Back in 2019, we proposed counterfactual dueling bandits, um, which was essentially an adaptation of online learning to rank for the sequential recommendation of, of, of uh, songs in this case. The key idea behind this and other online learning to rank methods uh, is that we represent uh, both the model we're trying to optimize as well as the, the instances uh, we're ranking here, in this case, songs in the same uh, feature space. So just to illustrate, we have here a two-dimensional uh, feature space and our model depicted here in this dashed line. Um, we say that the model recommended that particular song uh, which got a skip, uh, but that song was, was chosen among a set of, of other songs um, that were available to the model uh, at the time. For example, top retrieved uh, songs for the user or top retrieved songs given the, the seed song as input. Uh, but the thing is, the model didn't do well. Uh, it got a skip. Um, and at this point, uh, what CDB does is it triggers uh, an optimization of the model. It triggers an update uh, of the model. So uh, it does so via uh, exploration. So it explores the, the region around uh, the current model. There is a hyperparameter controlling how much we are going to explore in the vicinity of the current model. And we sample candidate uh, models as alternatives um, in this uh, region here. For example, a blue model would also, unfortunately, uh, rank uh, the skipped song on top. But we could have uh, more luck here uh, with other sampled uh, candidates. For example, a green model would now place that same skipped uh, song uh, at the second position, which is slightly better because that was, again, a negative feedback. And perhaps a third model uh, in red here would place that skipped song at the bottom. Uh, so we have many candidates or many candidate directions to improve upon uh, the current model. The key thing now is uh, how to exactly um, weight these different candidates so we can incorporate them back into the model. The way CDB does this, it, it somehow 
assesses the quality of each of these candidates based upon uh, the ranking um, performance, the ranking effectiveness of these models. Uh, but remember that we only have one uh, feedback available at this point in time, which is one time that got skipped. So we could say confidently that the first two candidate models are bad ones because they put the skipped song uh, on top of, of their produced rankings. On the other hand, we could say that, um, well, perhaps the red model is a good one because it ranked uh, the skipped song down to the bottom uh, of the ranking. However, uh, we're not so sure about this uh, because we know nothing about what that model would actually uh, have placed uh, on top. Actually, we know what uh, it placed on top, but we don't know what the user would think of these uh, top recommended songs by the red model because the, the red model didn't get a chance to uh, show these songs to the user. Um, hence, uh, the counterfactual nature of the assessment of the quality of, of these models. Uh, but the way CDB incorporates these models back into the current model is it plays uh, safe, essentially. It will not trust uh, the red model because although it seems to be doing well by placing uh, a known skipped uh, song at the bottom, uh, we know nothing about what is actually recommended at the top. So we better play safe and uh, stick with what we know, which is that these two models here, the, the blue and the green model, are definitely bad ones. We have evidence uh, for that. So what CDB does is it ignores uh, the uncertainty uh, about the, the third model and sticks with the two uh, bad models uh, it knows about. But then again, because these are bad models, bad directions in the search space, uh, the update will actually move the, the current model in black here away from these two uh, directions. So because perhaps the blue direction is a bit worse than the green one, uh, we'll move farther away from blue, then we move farther away uh, from, from green. So the resultant vector, uh, uh, after considering that, could be uh, something like this. Uh, the, the black uh, model will be pushed a bit uh, more towards the, the green uh, in the end. Okay, uh, hopefully uh, after updating the model uh, for the next uh, iteration, it will perform well and it will recommend a song that the user will like uh, and will listen to. Uh, this all works great uh, in practice. It, it's been shown to outperform uh, state-of-the-art contextual bandit approaches um, for recommendation of adapted to this uh, scenario, particularly considering uh, scenarios with large uh, catalogs. But there are two uh, main uh, shortcomings we identified uh, and we built upon in the current paper here. The first one uh, is related to the exploration phase of CDB. So essentially, uh, during uh, exploration, we come across some directions that we know are bad ones, like the, the blue uh, direction highlighted here. And the thing is, CDB does nothing about it for the subsequent iterations. It will uh, eventually um, sample the same bad direction again and, and again, uh, and maybe it will get a chance to, to recommend uh, songs to the user. But the thing is, this is uh, inefficient in practice because uh, we keep doing more of the same thing that didn't work uh, previously. So uh, th this might lead, for example, to slow convergence, which will affect uh, user experience along the way. To overcome this, uh, we propose uh, a no space uh, sampling approach inspired by recent work at SIGA 2018. Uh, the key idea here is that we'll keep track of bad performing directions along the way. Uh, so we keep a queue here with the AM uh, most recent uh, bad directions we identified. Then we pick uh, K um, among uh, these directions, the, the K worst among these directions, so we can focus on the, the very uh, bad uh, directions um, to guide uh, the exploration here. And lastly, we'll compute uh, the null space of the chosen directions, uh, meaning the space of directions, in this case, the direction in red here, which are orthogonal to all bad directions we've seen um, in the past. Essentially, what happens here is the uh, by, by restricting the search space to the null space 
of bad performing uh, directions we saw in the past, we kind of provide a safer uh, region for exploration here. And ideally, that will uh, make it more likely that we sample uh, good models uh, in, in the subsequent iterations. Uh, the second problem uh, we address in this paper is about the exploitation phase of CDB, where we uh, aggregate what we learned from the candidate models to update the current model. Uh, one thing we noticed was that CDB ignores uh, directions which are apparently good ones uh, because it doesn't trust them. And we claim that these might be worthy directions, directions worthy uh, pursuing, particularly since now uh, we were able to sample them from safer uh, subspaces. They may not be as likely to produce bad uh, sounds at the top, for example. And the other point we observed here is that regardless of whether we observe uh, bad or good directions along the way, these are indications of how good or how bad the current model itself is performing because bad and good directions are sampled in the vicinity of the current model. So there is valuable information about the momentum uh, the current model carries that we could explore. And uh, the way we do this, uh, this is the update equation for uh, the original CDB, as I uh, said before, it only updates the current model uh, WT minus one by moving against known uh, bad directions V uh, in this case by some learning rate or some exploitation rate as we call it here. Uh, for our proposal, uh, we want to also allow for updates towards uh, potentially good directions. So uh, in addition to eventually moving away from bad directions, we also want to allow uh, movements towards uh, good directions. And on top of that, we want to uh, exploit the, the moment uh, the current model is bringing to us by adding uh, some further weight against it uh, in the case of a bad uh, direction or uh, for it in, in the case of a good direction. Just to illustrate quickly uh, how this uh, thing works. So here we have a candidate direction, which is a bad one in this case, and the current model WT minus one. Under normal circumstances, we would just compute the subtraction of these two vectors and the resultant vector would move away uh, from that direction, uh, the bad one. Uh, with momentum, uh, we're going to move away even further, uh, suppressing the contribution of the current model. Conversely, for a good direction, we would normally uh, have a resultant through uh, vector addition in this case, what we do now is we amplify uh, the contribution of the current model uh, in this case. Uh, so uh, in the end, what we propose is called no space counterfactual dual in bandits NS CDB. And it's essentially an extension of the original CDB to improve uh, efficiency of exploration through no space sampling and the efficiency of exploitation through adaptive updates, bi-directional updates with momentum. And to evaluate the contribution, uh, we used uh, the last FM 1K data set, uh, which comprises uh, over 11 million uh, listening events for around uh, 770 users. And this was enriched uh, with uh, some additional data from Spotify and Music Brains. And we split this uh, sequences of events into six month uh, partitions in a sliding window uh, fashion. So essentially we use a partition I to uh, extract features that will be used in the, in the next uh, partition I plus one. And we used standard features uh, for the representation of songs here. I won't go into much detail uh, about them, but it's the same features used for the original CDB and they're described in the paper. Uh, to evaluate the approaches, we uh, consider uh, as positive examples the actual plays uh, a user gave us during his listening uh, session. And we complement uh, this, the, the, the sequence of positive examples with negative examples sampled uh, randomly from uh, a set of top retrieved songs uh, somehow related to the user or the seed song uh, in the session. This is to um, ensure some unbiased uh, evaluation. Um, by randomization. And we actually consider two scenarios here. Uh, we select uh, a first part of the test instances 
for what we call online evaluation. This is to measure uh, the effectiveness of the model as it learns, how users react to the model while it is learning. And the second half of the um, data is, is reserved as a held out data set uh, so we can more accurately measure the, the convergence of the model in a fixed uh, test set. And we repeat the runs uh, multiple times and average results across users and positions um, for uh, significance evaluation. So uh, just to go quickly through our main results here, uh, the first research question we address is whether we can improve exploration through the proposed uh, no space sampling approach. So we have on the y-axis here, the online evaluation metric, which, which is essentially a cumulative sum of the plays we get uh, along the many iterations on the x-axis with some discount um, as we go uh, further uh, to the right. And uh, to, to assess the impact of the exploration component, we contrast NSCDB, which is our proposal using no space sampling, to several variants of CDB that do not use no space sampling. So we can directly see the impact of this component. And just by looking at the first comparison here, we see that NSCDB significantly outperforms uh, CDB. This is consistent across um, users in all different uh, partitions. And more interestingly, the no space sampling approach is crucial for the performance of an SCDB. If you contrast it with a version uh, equivalent to an SCDB, except for the fact that it does random sampling instead of no space sampling, which is the one in purple here, we see a massive uh, improvement in the end. And uh, we also note that without oh, the no space sampling, sorry. Yeah, sorry to interrupt. This is really, we're reaching the end of the session. So maybe you okay. just want to go to the conclusion. Thank you. Okay, let me just uh, skip through the, the main results here and there. Uh, so bottom line, uh, no space exploration helps, uh, particularly uh, for faster convergence at the beginning of the sessions. We also looked at the contribution of exploitation uh, through bidirectional updates and momentum. They all contribute uh, and they contribute even further when combined. And uh, it, this includes convergence in the long run. And we also have some hyperparameter analysis uh, in the paper. I won't have time to go through all of them, uh, but they essentially um, re reinforce uh, the conclusions I've just uh, showed you here. And just to wrap up quickly, uh, we introduced no space counterfactual dueling bandits for efficient exploration and exploitation uh, in sequential music recommendation. And we see some uh, interesting open directions here, uh, particularly adapting the bias variance trade off uh, on a per user basis and also potential applications of this approach to different uh, scenarios, which also resemble music recommendation with um, uh, scarce feedback, for example, push notifications. And that's it. Uh, I'm not sure if we have time for questions, but I'm happy to take any. Thank you very much. Uh, we don't really have time for questions, but I'm allowing if anybody has a question, it's now. Uh, yes, so uh, great work. I have a question about the positive and negative feedback. A user skipping a song can be definitely regarded as negative feedback. However, I guess that the user finishing the song might not be positive since user can be unaware of the playing song and leave it as a background music. You have two seconds to it. <laughs> uh, so essentially, uh, in the original paper, we chose to, to stick with uh, negative feedback because it was uh, more uh, certain uh, what we would have in turn. And we decided to avoid positive feedback altogether. It was just unreliable. And here uh, we gave it a chance by making it more likely to be reliable. Uh, by construction resampling, even the directions I called good ones from a safer uh, subspace. And that's one of the reasons we believe um, those positive directions can now be exploited more successfully 